Welcome. I'm Sean McCone, Director of Photo Wildlife Park, and I'm here to tell you something about our sustainability policies here. Um, the Wildlife Park, uh, over the next five to seven years, have a plan to become carbon neutral, um, and that's in, in the various aspects of our purchasing, to uh, energy, to um, just generally how we run the Wildlife Park. Um, we have a number of initiatives. We st we've started a, a tree planting program um, four years ago. Uh, we, we were going to continue that throughout the park, and it's about replacing a number of the older trees that are um, that are now dying out around the boundary areas of the wildlife park that that provide protection both to the arboretum and to a number of uh, the warmer areas within the park. The other aspect of it. Uh, is that we want to get a lot of the equipment and machi machinery now uh, based on, on uh, electrical um, power rather than uh, diesel or any carbon uh, sourced power. Um, so um, there, there are two things around that. It makes the, the, um, the experience for the public that come to the park a lot quieter, but also um, we, we will be using um, energy more efficiently and uh, energy from sources that are renewable. Um, we have plans for our uh, giraffe house in the near future to um, redevelop that area and uh, use the roof of that uh, giraffe house as a source of uh, photo or solar energy. Um, and it'll provide energy for the rest of the park but also be able to feed into the national grid because we have a supply to the national grid right beside that point. We also harvest a lot of rainwater, uh, particularly around the main entrance area. We, we, have, um, we harvest rainwater there to use in, uh, in flushing in our um, toilets at the main entrance. Uh, we hope to do a similar project um, in our Oasis Cafe and uh, we'll be doing in any future developments using har harvesting rainwater for use in um, toilets but also in say for instance cleaning cleaning animals exhibits etc um, beyond that we have a, no a number of initiatives um, of course around our animal collection so uh, the animal we are now um, rearing a lot of natterjack toads for release into the wild so that's in cooperation with the National Parks and Wildlife Service and um, local farmers in Kerry. Uh, they, they dig out um, some um, ponds, small ponds, and um, they get a grant for doing that. And then we provide the, natter the natterjack toads for um, repopulating these areas. So it's about expanding the, the, the range and the habitat for, of natterjack toads in Kerry. We're also involved with the Corncrake, uh, Atlantic Corncrake Life Programme, which aims to secure and increase the population of corncrakes in Ireland. We're involved in the research aspect around uh, identifying crawling males, um, also about locating nests so that uh, if there are nests in a field site that's going to be cut for, for, um, for hay or for harvesting, that um, these, being, these can be located and, if necessary, removed um, and if the eggs are removed then they, they, they can be reared in captivity for release in photo or else at um, Bora Bog um, Wildlife Centre and uh, then uh, either then be introduced back into the wild. So we've also started a reintroduction program for um, great partridges into the local area starting with Photo Island here but hopefully spreading in into the greater East Cork area um, and bringing that species back uh, into nature in, into East Cork. Um, beyond that um, we are also um, actively involved in putting up nest boxes um, in the local community but also within in the wildlife park we have put up starling boxes um, and um, owl boxes throughout the park um, and that, that has been quite successful. Um, but I suppose the biggest uh, contribution that we make is um, 
to global sustainability around populations of animals um, such as um, the European bison which went extinct in the wild uh, and was reintro reintroduced into, into the wild from animals that were born in captivity. Um, we were involved in that in reintroducing bison to the Velowice forest in Poland also to the Carpathian Mountains in the Southern Carpathian Mountains in Romania uh, into um, northern Spain uh, and this has been very successful. Um, the species now uh, is no longer considered critically endangered. It is now considered to, to, um, to be only be vulnerable in the wild um, because the populations in the wild have grown to over two and a half thousand and uh, will cre increase dramatically over the, the um, near future. Uh, other species that, that we are involved in reintroduction programs include the scimitar horned oryx, uh, again a species that became extinct in the wild and uh, has now been um, put back into the wild, reintroduced into the wild in Tunisia and other parts of North Africa. And so many of the species that, that are here in photo are either extinct in the wild, critically endangered, um, uh, which is means they're nearly extinct in the wild, such as the uh, black and white rough lemurs, uh, ring-tailed lemurs, um, and um, other um, primates would include a number of gibbon species that are endangered. Um, but it also extends to even animals or species that we have in our tropical house. So a number of fish, um, particularly freshwater fish, are under uh, extreme pressure in the wild. Um, some of the species that we have are extinct in the wild and um, are actually being trying to be re reintroduced back to the wild. Um, so it's about maintaining sustainable future populations uh, of these species both in the wild and in captivity. Uh, and we support a number of projects in Madagascar, in Vietnam, which help to support the wild populations, but also in captivity then we're involved in supporting uh, similar projects um, in supporting uh, lemur populations in captivity um, so that they can be reintroduced back into the wild. Uh, so there's, there's a two-pronged approach here that we're involved in, in, in what's called in situ projects in the wild and also in the ex situ projects in captivity um, and so by maintaining healthy sta uh, stable populations in captivity we can then use these to reintroduce into the wild where necessary but in many cases unfortunately these habitats no longer exist and have to be recreated in the wild and that takes time uh, and we're also involved in that. One of the things about visiting FOTA uh, you're helping species in, in Ireland but also species in, in, in the wild in throughout the world. Uh, a great example of that is our Madagascan Poacher project where um, we support the, uh, re the captive breeding program and the reintroduction of uh, Madagascan Poacher back into the wild. There are no Madagascan Poacher in FOTA but uh, we, um, we facilitated and donated money to the, breeding, to the captive breeding um, construction of a captive breeding centre in Madagascar. Uh, that has been very successful. Um, so there are now o over 150 Madagascan pochard, both in including captive populations and wild populations. While when it started, there were less than 20 of these pochard in the wild, uh, and numbers decreasing. Uh, so that's had a dramatic effect, and um, we have a source of funding here where you um, can f can spend 50 cents on our d in our duck feeder get some food and give to the ducks and geese here and by doing that you're also supporting the ducks and geese or the, the sorry the ducks in in uh, the Madagascar pochard in the wild in Madagascar